All right. Hey, everybody. It is Fran Harris. Welcome to Badass Traffic, the seven C's that guarantee a flood of traffic. I am your host, Fran Harris, and I'm going to be with you for about 30 minutes today. Thanks for joining me. We will have a, a fast and furious time as I talk about some of the things that we're doing in my business, some of the things that you can use to catapult the traffic to your websites as well, whether you're using WP Badass Countdown or not. This webinar is about traffic. And it's about probably some of the some of the things that you guys have heard before. You may have used it in some of your uh, in some of your online properties. Maybe you haven't, but we like to get really creative in my company. We know that the, the longer the, the internet is around the more difficult it can be in some instances to get the targeted traffic that we need. So Badass Traffic really is about sharing with you seven ways that we're using either in my company or in clients companies to help them get more traffic. So who am I? Those of you who of course visit my sales page for WB Badass Countdown, you know that I'm a national television personality and a business explosion expert. Now if you're interested in seeing the official bio of mine, you can go to ESPNMediaZone.com and search for Fran Harris. Okay, I've appeared on over 100 television shows, including the Today Show with Good Morning America, ESPN, OWN, NBC, TLC, and some of the other that you some of the other uh, networks that you see on screen. So I've made my living on television for the last 17 to 20 years. But I started in sales. I started in sales and marketing with Procter & Gamble. I was getting out of grad school in the mid-90s at the University of Texas at Austin and uh, went to work for Procter & Gamble, which most of you, if you're familiar with P&G, know that they make some of the best brands, the most well-known brands on the planet, including Crest Toothpaste, Scope, Mouthwash, Tide Detergent, Head & Shoulders, Shampoo, Febreze, and many, 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 many others. I was in charge of one of our grocery clients and had a, an account that was worth $4.3 billion. So I got a chance to learn the inside of a multi-gazillion dollar company, how they market their brands, how they sell their brands, and how they were able to keep their market share over the last hundred or so years. So that's kind of my background. And that what I learned with Procter & Gamble and started to see very early in my career was that it doesn't matter how great your products are. I mean, it really doesn't. It doesn't matter how great your products are. If you don't have quality traffic, your sales will always equal a big fat zero, right? Everybody knows that if you don't have quality traffic, you will never make sales. And so while we, we love to look at great sales pages and there's all the rave about great sales videos and all those things, if you don't get the right traffic, you guys know that you will never be able to sustain your online business. All right. So I want to welcome those of you who may be getting here a couple of minutes late, and I'm going to welcome you with a little uh, little sound effect. Welcome to the call. <laughs> welcome to uh, badass traffic. And we're talking now about why it's important to really take a, a look at how you're getting traffic to your sales pages, and that leads us to today. So many people have told me over the last few days, like I'm getting great looks on my sales pages. Uh, I'm getting people. I'm doing things in social media. I'm doing things on YouTube. My page looks great. My video is fantastic, but I'm not getting the kind of traffic that I want. So this is not a, a webinar on SEO. I'm not going to be delving into the tricks and tips and techniques that we use with our search engine optimization. We're going to be talking about very creative and innovative and very simple ways to start just driving incremental traffic to your site. Now, you're going to be with me probably for about 25 or 30 minutes. I'm a very fast talker, as you can tell. I love what I do, very passionate about sales and marketing. So uh, hang with me as we zoom through badass traffic. So this is the Fast and Furious webinar about getting the right eyeballs, not just a lot of eyeballs, but the right eyeballs on your website. So the seven C's, these seven C's are not theoretical. They are not things that I've thought about and have not put into play. You've got to understand some of my clients are university athletic departments. They are multi-billion dollar corporations like Pepsi and Coke. And they are entrepreneurs, solopreneurs like some of you listening to me now. And honestly, we're talking about the same thing. My, the same conversations I'm having with you right now, I've actually had with Coca-Cola. I mean, the same conversations I'm having with you right now, I've actually had 
with tier one BCS, if you will, top top level university athletic officials. So it, it really is the same. And so I'm excited to be sharing these things with you because I know they can work for multi gazillion dollar companies and some of my solopreneur clients, and I know that they can work for you as well. So let us jump right into them. Number one, great traffic generator is controversy. Controversy. I mean, even if you're selling widgets, even if you're selling plugins, some kind of way creating controversy in your ads, creating controversy or something that may feel like it's controversy in your emails or in your ads or your Facebook posts or your Pinterest posts, whatever, will generate more traffic. Now, let me give you an example. This is just last week. Last week, I was attempting to get traffic at the very last minute. Okay, last minute. Didn't have a whole lot of time. I wanted to drive some extra traffic to a webinar that I was doing. I was, in, I was being a guest on a, on a webinar. It was a marketing webinar. So I thought about all the things I could do in Facebook to kind of generate some traffic, right? I could go uh, fantastic marketing webinar. I could do that as a, a heading. I could say marketing with Fran as a header, I could say, grow your business. None of those are very sexy, and none of those are going to get a whole lot of attention, although that's what I see. When my clients come to me, they, those are the headlines that they have used. They've used them in their Facebook ads. <laughs> they've used them on their website. And I'm like, nobody's going to pay attention to that. Nobody's really going to pay attention to that. So I did a couple of split tests. One of them I did just what I said to you. I had like a very boring kind of grow your business headline for my ad, and then also, I did something, and I put, I put your marketing sucks. So I know you probably can't see that right here. You can see my cursor, but that's what it says in my Facebook ad. This is last week, October eighth. Your marketing sucks. All right, now let me give you some uh, some stats. This is I think I did this like twenty four hours before, uh, before the webinar. So the ad reached eighteen thousand eight hundred and thirty eight folks. Frequency of 2.5. That means that everybody saw it on average two and a half times. I got 57 clicks. The click-through rate was only like 0.11, and I spent uh, about $10.62. I got 57 unique link uh, link clicks. All right. Now those numbers are not going to make you a millionaire, but think about this. A day before my webinar, I'm looking just for extra exposure. Got 18,000 reached 18,000 folks, got 57 clicks, and if I followed this through, actually 17 of those people actually signed up for the webinar. Okay, now we're now those people are in my autoresponder. Now those people will get to know me and be marketed and will ultimately buy something. Now, I didn't put up the other, the, uh, the, the very generic conservative headline, but trust me, it was nothing like this. Like the ad reach of your marketing sucks versus grow your business, the difference was astronomical. So controversy sells. We all know this, but are you actually putting it into play with your marketing? If you are, let me give you this. Outstanding. It's a round of applause. All right. So number two, celebrity. Celebrity, celebrity, celebrity will drive traffic. Now, if you're a sports fan, then you may know that this is Lamar Odom, who played for the Los Angeles Lakers, he played for the Los Angeles Clippers, and he also played for the Dallas Mavericks in the NBA. Well, he's in a bit of trouble. I think we think he's out on a, a drug binge. We haven't heard from him. He just left, just disappeared. Left his wife. We don't know where this, this guy is. Now, there are lots of things you can do there. Let's say if you were a PR, if you have a website that's about publicity, you could completely dovetail and uh, piggy bank, piggy bank, <laughs> piggyback on the Lamar Odom controversy and say, okay, if this is what's happening in your company, here are three or four tips to help you turn bad publicity, turn negative publicity into uh, a shining moment or whatever, okay? That's just one example. And the reason celebrity is so great, as we know, of driving traffic is because people want to know what stars are doing. They constantly want to know what stars are doing. And so don't make it hard for yourself. Just piggyback on what's happening in the news and make it relevant to whatever it is that you're selling. Uh, Justin Bieber, you know, finally is growing up and he's getting into some trouble, but he's always in the news. Now, here's one of my favorite shows, Shark Tank. Shark Tank is one of my favorite shows. If you don't know, it's on ABC on Friday nights, I think at 8 o'clock Central, 9 o'clock Eastern. Anyway, perfect because we're all, if you're listening to me, you're, you're an online marketer. 
right? You're an entrepreneur, megapreneur. I'm always talking about Shark Tank on my Facebook page. I'm always talking about business lessons that I'm learning from Shark Tank, and then I'll just put a link to either an affiliate uh, product or one of my 150 products, right? Whether it's like a $7 deal page that I'm promoting, a product that's on a deal page, or whether it's like an ebook for $3, or whether it's a $97 or $997 course. If you piggyback on what's already in the news, the authority about the topic is already there. So you're, you're piggybacking in a way and you don't have to work as hard. Same thing here with, with Katy Perry. You know, I can go, I can literally spend the entire 30 minutes on how to leverage celebrity traffic, but I think you guys get the, get the, the, the gist of what I'm talking about. Leverage celebrity traffic to drive things and people to your offerings and your pages. Number three, culinary. We love food. Come on. We love food. If we didn't love food, there wouldn't be the Food Network. There wouldn't be the Cooking Channel. There wouldn't be these other channels. I mean, we love food. We love talking about it. We love eating it. We love watching it. And guess what? Guess what, like, in the top five kinds of images shared online? You betcha, food. So how do you incorporate culinary traffic into your marketing plan? Well, it's very easy. You take something like this. I mean, it's a great picture of, of pancakes, and it looks like it's been enhanced, but it's amazing. Let's say you are selling some kind of widget, like I'm selling WP Badass Countdown, and I, and I want to increase my sales. And what I might do is say, over the weekend when most of you were buying WP Badass Countdown, I could have put up a site that said, WP Badass Countdown is so badass, it is selling like hotcakes. Guess what? People, some people are going to lock into the fact that I'm, I'm marketing the plugin. Some people are just going to promote and share this image because my words are on the image. Okay, so leverage the background of your of food to truly drive traffic. Now that's very relevant to what I was saying. Hey, my my plugin is selling like like hotcakes, but people are going to love and lock into the image, and that's what they're going to share. And guess what? When they click on it, they're going to go back to my site. All right. So think of how you can use culinary traffic in your business, it doesn't matter. Think outside the lines, guys. Food is a great way to drive traffic no matter what topic or industry or niche you're in, all right? Number four, conflict. This is a cousin of controversy. And in fact, I'm gonna give you a little bell on, boo! Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm spoiled by Google, by Google. Oh, where do we go? Here we go. I'm spoiled by Google Hangout because it's got all these toys and, and that's what you should be really focusing on when you're doing your when you're doing your hangouts but this isn't a hangout uh, webinar this is a traffic webinar so here we go conflict the first cousin of controversy this might be something you are are sharing on in social media you know is it time to shut Obama down let's say if you have some kind of product and you want to to really piggyback on the, the government shutdown well guess what people are so divided on this issue that there's absolutely no way if you position it right and put the right text and copy in your ad or on your image, people are going to share it. It is going to drive traffic. So don't shy away from don't shy away from conflict. People love it. And people, you know, people would rather talk about something that they're polarized on than just look at your, your image or your ad and just go, eh, that's boring. Okay. So focus on the conflict. Focus on the things that, that are in the news right now that people are completely divided by. So we got the government shutdown, we've got uh, gun laws, we've got capital punishment, we've got all kinds of things that you can literally piggyback on again and drive people to your blog, drive them to your products, drive them to your opt-in page, whatever. Make it relevant. Now, because I don't know you, I don't know exactly what your businesses are, can't give you the most relevant way to, to use this. But one of the things that we did when the election was happening was we bought a couple of domains and we did a poll. And so we were like, okay, are you for Romney or are you for Obama and why and those kinds of things. And it just drove massive, massive traffic. And of course, then how we use that was that we found a product um, where it was like a newsletter. We found a political newsletter that we directed people to. So they opted in and then we directed them to a political newsletter and uh, we, we sell about maybe two or three of those a week. Again, a one-time thing that we did because we were we were piggybacking on a current event that had a lot of conflict around it. So I think I'm going to give myself a, a drum on that. Boom! All right. 
So here we go. Let's go to number five, contest. And most of you have heard about contest traffic. You can do something like have a headlines contest. So let's say you're launching a new product online and you're trying to figure out what your sales page should say. And so you may have three headlines that you want to test. Well, you can send that out to your list or put it on Facebook or social media or whatever you want to do in terms of sharing it and say, hey, we're trying to figure out, we've gotten down to the final three of my headlines, which do you guys think is best? Or honestly, you can make it a, an open-ended contest and just say, give me the best headline for this picture. And you will be amazed at the kinds of things that people will give you. Now, they will be more incentivized if you pay them, you know, or give them something free or whatever, but honestly, if you just say the word contest and set up the contest well, people will participate because we love winning stuff and this will drive massive traffic to whatever you're promoting. Alrighty, so that's contest traffic. And now there's canine traffic. Canine traffic. Put a dog or a baby in the ad and people say the clicks go through the roof. Now, you gotta get really creative and you gotta be pretty innovative to make a dog work when you're talking about, uh, let's see, copywriting. But if you just think about it a little bit, I'm sure there's a way you can do it. So let's say, I'm gonna do this right off the cuff right now. I don't have any other notes in front of me. If you put this dog in front of me and said, okay, Fran, you got 30 seconds, 30 seconds, write me a, a compelling ad selling a product. Then what I might do with this is, have this picture of this dog and maybe put another picture side beside it of a button and might say uh, cute as a button. All right, now that's a bad example, but you get my point. <laughs> you get my point. There are ways you can do it cute as a button and then, it, and, then, and then you're clicking through to buy a button kit because we've done our research and we know that people who are sewing buttons on coats love these kinds of things. Well, you get the point, guys. You know what I'm saying. The point is there are ways to use the world's love of dogs in very, very effective ways to sell products that are not related to dogs or to sell products that are related to dogs. I mean, certainly dog lovers are very rabid. They're very passionate. So find a great affiliate program and use a cute dog and sell it. But I love it when my clients actually find photos that have nothing to do with what, what well, they find photos that look like they have nothing to do with the product that they're selling. And through their genius, they figure out a way to make it work. What you're attempting to do is to, to truly galvanize people by images. And we know that. People love images, honestly. And, and I was reading somewhere, maybe it was Mashable, where people will share images before they share videos. Okay? And I think it's because videos require more of us, right? You got to press the button. You got to look. You got to listen. You got to do all that. You see a picture. You see this picture. You're thinking, oh, how cool, how cute, right? Don't know the psychology, just know that it's true. Pictures are more shareable than anything. So if you're not putting pictures in all of your posts, then you're missing out on the opportunity to get some major traffic and some major clicks. All right, so that's canine traffic. And then finally, seriously, the call to action traffic. I want you to test this. I can't tell you how many times I will be working with someone and, and they will say, okay, will you take a look at my, will you do an audit on my website? And I'll look at their site and I'm like, did you tell people to, to order? No, well, the order button is there. Yeah, I know that, but did you tell them to order it? Well, why should I tell them to order it when the order button is there? Because <laughs> research shows that we are more likely to do it, probably twice as likely to do something if we are told to do it. That's why in videos, even sales videos, you will hear people saying, all right, what you need to do right now is click the bright orange button or click the yellow button or scroll down this page and you will see them pointing down the page. There is a reason. Whenever people are saying, well, why did you do that, friend? I go, there is a reason because it works. So up your call to actions. Don't just say, hey, check out this video. Literally say, click this button to watch this video of this cute dog and then do this. We have to tell people what to do. I want you to go through some of your videos, some of your sales pages, some of your emails or whatever, and look at how, how many times you've missed an opportunity to tell people what to do. And I guarantee you it has affected, in a negative way, your opt-ins. It's affected your, your sales, your conversions. 
you have to tell people what to do. So very quickly, I'm going to go through all of these again, just so we got them, because I never put them all on one page. We're at the, the 20 minute mark, so we're, we're rolling along. Go for controversy. The C, the first C of my seven C's is controversy. My ad said, your marketing sucks. We even got people who liked it. Okay, your marketing sucks because the truth of the matter is most people's marketing sucks. All right, use controversy to drive clicks. Let's see, I want to play something. All right, number two. Again, let's go with celebrity. Number two, don't forget that the news is full of celebrity news. Tag on, jump on the bandwagon, use it, make it relevant to what you are doing. All right, number three. Culinary traffic. Never pass up the opportunity to use a picture of food. Never pass up the opportunity to use a picture of food. Tie it in, make it relevant, but this is a great way. We are fascinated by food. We are galvanized by food. We love food. When I see a picture of food, I'm, I'm totally there. All right, Even more than, than good-looking people. I will look at a food picture before I look at a good-looking person picture. Right? Don't pass up the opportunity to, to incorporate culinary traffic into your plan. Let's move on. Number four. All right. Conflict. Oh, cause a ruckus out there. Make somebody mad. It will drive traffic. If you want people to get mad, talk about politics, talk about guns, talk about abortion, talk about Obamacare, talk about religion, talk about uh, small business kickbacks, talk about anything where people are highly opinionated, trust me, you will get the conflict and therefore you will get the traffic. Let's go on to number five. Number five is contest traffic. Get creative. Figure out some things that you can do to create some contests. And it doesn't have to be that deep. It doesn't have to be, hey, who's going to win the World Series if, if baseball ever ends <laughs> this year. But it could be something like that. I mean, sports fans are rabid. They are hyper, hyper passionate. If you're not incorporating sports contests into your traffic, I don't know what you're doing with your marketing money. I really don't. Sports folks, and I say this because I'm a former athlete, of course, and then now as an ESPN announcer right now, my life, part of my life is very much entrenched in sports. So I see the passion on a daily basis. If you want people to respond to what you're doing online in your social spaces, get that social influence, Start talking about sports and drive those people to places where you can get them as opt-ins and ultimately customers, all right? Next, number six, canine traffic. Cute dogs will drive traffic. Cute cats will drive traffic. I was on a book tour a couple years ago, and one of the people who had been published by the same company who published my book had gotten her book deal because she was a catpreneur, what I call a catpreneur. She had started this blog. And literally had a hundred thousand at the time, a hundred thousand subscribers to her blog. And this was six or seven years ago. A hundred thousand subscribers talking about cats. And guess what her blog was full of? You got it. Pictures and videos of her cat. I'm telling you, people get on board with the canine traffic. Let's move on. Number seven, call to action. Ask people, tell people what to do. Click the button, buy now, go here now, type this in right now. Whatever it is, whatever fits for whatever you're selling or whatever you want people to do, you must tell them what to do. All right? So right now, while it's still warm in your brain's oven, I want you to decide which of my seven C's you're going to execute this week. Is it going to be celebrity? Is it going to be canine? Is it going to be culinary? It's going to be conflict, controversy, call to action. What is it going to be? What are you going to do? Don't say I'm going to do it all because you're not. You're not going to do it all. Decide which of my seven C's you're going to test. Just test it this week and see what happens. And then do it, people. Do it. You will not get traffic, as I said earlier. If the product is good, that's great. But unless you do something to get those targeted eyeballs there so that you can sell them and that you can convert them, um, you know, nothing's going to work. So I'm giving you some kind of out-of-the-box, out-of-the-planet thoughts 
just some different ways to think about how you've gotten traffic outside of the normal. Let's talk about Google SEO. Let's talk about offline. Let's talk about long tail keywords, all that stuff. Get Have some fun with it. My marketing is fun. And it's fun because I know that there are lots of ways that we can use some of the things I've talked about today to, and we continue to use them to help us grow our business and to, to build our traffic. And then the final thing I'll say to you guys, thanks for joining me, of course, is uh, in the next webinar, which is Badass Sales, today was Badass Traffic, I will be sharing some high-powered as well as low-hanging fruit sales tactics to increase your revenues. That's going to be Friday, November 1st at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. And remember, just like this webinar, if you're not available to watch it live, it is available in the members area if you miss it. So that's going to do it for me. I'm Fran Harris, creator of WP Badass Countdown, saying thanks again for your business. I will see you guys on Friday, November 1st at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time for Badass Sales. Until then, have a great week, and I will talk to you guys soon. Take care.